personal duty, it is my honour to read a message from Her Majesty the Queen. 75 years ago, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth dedicated this National War Memorial in honour of all those who paid the supreme sacrifice in the Great War. Today it is fitting that, with this ceremony of rededication, we pay tribute to all those Canadians who in the intervening years have laid down their lives in the service of peace, justice and freedom. Well said, and what a day it has been. Veterans are a blessing to Canada. We're going to speak to one of them. Born and raised in Harris, Saskatchewan, on a farm, Bob Hanley enlisted in 1940 in the Royal Canadian Air Force, and then again in 1953. During World War II, he served overseas for almost four years. He also, and I'm going to ask him about this, he shook Winston Churchill's hand after the D-Day invasion. He joins us now from Ottawa. Welcome to you, sir. Good evening. Now, uh, Phil, I have to ask you, you shook Winston Churchill's hand. What happened? How did that, how did that occur? I was located, I'm an aeronautical engineer, and it, that was the people that service the air, Spitfire aircraft that support the Army as it moves across Europe. Mm -hmm. And this, we landed on, in Normandy on D plus six. Now, if, if, about a month after that, uh, there was an aircraft landed right in, in our, where the aircraft were, and I drove over to look and see who it was, and who gets out of the aircraft but Winston Churchill. <laughs> now for the next two, two or maybe three minutes, we stood there, he talking to me, certainly I didn't have much to say to him, Anyway, we had a, a little conversation, and then General Eisenhower and General Montgomery and two or three other generals drove up in their big staff cars and picked them up. Anyway, that, 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 was, uh, that was the part of, uh, I found interesting. Uh -huh. I, passed, I passed that on to uh, many, many people, and they, everybody was interested in it. Well, can you imagine today with, uh, you know, with, with the, 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 the iPhones and all this? I mean, there, there would have been endless photographs that we don't have any, but, but what, what an occasion. He had, he had a wonderful bond with, with soldiers and airmen and, and sailors, didn't he, Churchill? I mean, he really understood how to communicate with them. Well, what, what, he, what we found, that he would drop into the different bases all over the country. Navy one time, Army, the next in the Air Force, and each time... He presented himself so well. Mm. We knew who he was, and he was my model, or most of our models. Yeah. He said, when I, we will fight them on the beaches, we shall fight them on the streets. That, that was something every English person knew. Yeah. And this is what I was amazed at. When I went to England, I found that the people kept quiet. They didn't uh, convey any information at all to anybody unless they really knew you. Yeah. So I have to admire those people. Right. right. And it's something that if, if we get into a situation here, I hope we could do about the same. Mm -hmm. Now, l let me ask you, and it probably sounds a, a pretty dumb question, but why, why in 1940 did you to fill that need to join? What, what, what were you feeling at the time? Well, in 1939, I, I, I think you show, I, I was born in Saskatchewan. Yeah. And we lived on a farm, and we got the radio news, like everybody else. In those days, the radios were much different than they are today. But it was indicating that the war clouds were, in the, were approaching us. Mm -hmm. It was coming quite obvious that we were going to be fighting a war. And so, in my case, we had four, four boys. So two of us decided we would go in the service. He went, my older brother went in the army, he was killed in Italy. And uh, I went in the Air Force because I liked mechanics. And so I started off in the Air Force. I went to Saskatoon Technical College and they started 
trained me how to be an aircraft technician. And after that, then I, I, I joined the Air Force. So I joined in, in July of 1940. Right. Now, I went to McLeod and we are Canada ran the air, the air, uh, uh, let me see, it's where they uh, train pilots. Mm -hmm. Right. We had different bases, and I was at McLeod. Right. But after about a year and a half, I was selected as, as, as one of the technicians to go overseas yeah. with the idea that England needed people to service the Spitfire aircraft that were that were fighting in the Battle of Britain. Yeah. yeah. So I uh, and 11 other Canadians, we went to England. That was January 1942. Right. And then I, I was overseas for three years and eight months. Right. So from there on, it was a matter of working with the RAF. And then the Canadian squadrons, they formed the Canadian wings in about 1943. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was one of the engineer officers in that. Right. If I may, and I have spoken to many men over the years who fought in wars, and what, what they, they tend to be very, um, I suppose, mocking about their own contribution, and they say, oh, I didn't do anything. And, and others say, well, it, it, it's 10% it, it, it's terror and 90% boredom. But let me ask you were, you, were you ever frightened? Oh, I, I, I've been so frightened, I thought I, uh, I... The first day we landed on the continent, we had no place to stay, no tents up or anything like that. But there was a German dugout. Uh, and I crawled into it. And I would say it's about six feet deep. Mm -hmm. And that they were shooting Bofor guns all around the base. And uh, the shell, the fragments of shells from the Bofor guns, yeah. it was falling almost like, like a hail. Yeah. And it was falling. Sometimes some would fall down into the trench. And I would, I would put my helmet on. And that helmet was not very big. <laughs> and sometimes I'd put my head, then on my chest, and then on my seat. But I always prayed. I don't think I ever prayed so hard <laughs> as I did that night. And I think it paid off. I'm here. Well, thank God. It, it is such an honor to speak with you tonight. And uh, thank you for all you've done and, and for being on the show. Thank you. Well, I, I want to thank all the people that came out to Remembrance. Yes. It, it was wonderful, wonderful to see so many people. Yes, it was. It's, it's good. Yes, thank it you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.